Hey everybody, I'm John and this is Blind Whiskey Reviews. Hey everybody and thank you so much for joining me today here on Blind Whiskey Reviews, the most honest reviews on YouTube. Today we're bringing you another No Time to Like the Present review where I crack a brand new bottle of whiskey open. We take a taste, let you guys know how it's doing right before we get to the blind review down the line here somewhere. So today I'm doing a little bit of a different one. Um, this isn't a whiskey I would normally be doing in a No Time Like the Present review. Um, <clears throat> there's really no special reason to be opening up a standard bottling of Knob Creek. However, I made a promise to you guys in a video, in a couple of videos I did in the last couple of weeks, those being the Knob Creek 12 year and the newly released limited edition Knob Creek Quarter Oak. I told you guys we'd be doing a, comp a comparison with the standard Knob Creek, so that's why I wanted to crack this, at least one of the reasons I wanted to crack this bottle open today for you, letting you get a little bit of air time so we can catch up to these guys and we can do a fair comparison on all these whiskeys and let you know how they compare and how they rank in terms of the price to value ratio. So those will be coming very shortly. You can look forward to those soon. I also wanted to do this video because I don't think I've ever had a bottle of the non-age stated Knob Creek. I've never had one. Um, when Knob Creek lost its age statement in the last couple of years, it was still pretty readily available to find the bottlings with the age statement, so I just stuck to those. So I don't think I've, I've had this whiskey in a bar, but I have not had a bottle of it. So I thought it'd be fun to crack it here with you today and get a taste and let you know what I think of it. So without further ado, let's crack this bottle open. Those of you who know Knob Creek, and we talked about this a little bit before, but Knob Creek used to be a nine-year age stated whiskey, and in the last couple of years, it lost that nine-year age statement, is now a non-age stated whiskey. However, and again, no mess from this wax, they have upped their wax game. That's a, a proof positive after four Jim Beam products with their wax, and no spillage. Um, but yeah, and now the nine-year Knob Creek is coming back. That was an official... I believe an official statement from Jim Beam. So we will get the pleasure of the nine year age dated whiskey returning. But until that time, this is what we've got to work with. So we're going to taste the non age dated Knob Creek, which, if you don't know, is bottled at 100 proof, 50% ABV as Knob Creek always has been. Let's get to the nose. Yeah, it just has that very standard, like Jim Beam nose. And very similar to what I described to you on um, these other whiskeys, these other Knob Creeks that we just recently reviewed. They all share a very similar profile. Now, you know, maybe they're a little bit more robust in different areas, but definitely a similar profile. Hmm. Now, this one doesn't smell quite as pungent so far. It doesn't have the, like robust qualities it's it's got the same notes there but they're not as in your face they're not as bold not as strong so that's just my first impression on the nose i mean you can get a lot of those same a little bit of light fruit a little bit of cherry a little bit of brown sugar slight oakiness a little vanilla a slight hint of that like jim beam nutty quality you know what will be fun to do, and I still have, I have a brand new bottle of the nine-year H.D. Knob Creek, so let's just keep comparing Knob Creeks. Let's, let's do that. I think that'll be fun. Yeah, I mean, it just smells very standard to me, but a little bit, like I said, a little bit lighter than I remember. Not quite so bold as I remember Knob Creek in my previous tastings being. So let's get to the taste and see where it does on the taste palette here. Cheers. So, yeah, this whiskey is a bit different than some of the other Knob Creek releases, at least in my first tasting here. Um, it doesn't have as much complexity. It's, it's not one note, but it's very kind of consistently flavored over the different parts of your palate, and there's not a ton of flavor. You get a lot of that a much, much bolder 
burst of that Jim Beam Nutty character that's very, very forward in this whiskey. A little taste of the alcohol. You get a little touch of light fruit. Everything else is kind of faint. Let's get another taste. Don't want to judge by for just the first sip here. It's still good whiskey. It's just nowhere near the the richness and complexity of some of these other releases. So I'm really excited to do the side by side because I think it's really going to show what you're getting in terms of value or what the added benefits of paying more money for some of these other releases are, like the 12 year or the um, quarter oak. Or <clears throat> um, it'll be fun to do it against the nine year age dated whiskey and see what kind of improvements we can expect with the nine year age statement coming back. I think that's gonna be awesome. This is just missing something. It's just, it's missing some of those complexities. It's missing the, the boldness of some of the characters that are kind of hiding in the background. And like that's because it didn't spend, at least some of this whiskey, it didn't spend as much time in the barrel. So we didn't have as much time to develop those characters and flavors, and which is why it's a little bit lighter on the palate in terms of the flavor. So. I think it's still a perfectly good drinkable whiskey. Yeah, I have no problem sipping this neat. It still tastes good to me, but as I recall the others tasting, they were definitely better. Now the question being is, were they? Was there enough of a difference to justify a significant price difference? And we'll get toward to that at the end of the video here. Let me get one more sip. Yep. So. As we always do in these, I'm gonna let this whiskey sit in the glass for the next 20 to 30 minutes, give it the opportunity to open up a little bit, see if we can't get a few more characters to pop out of this thing. Maybe it'll bolt, you know, a couple of these background notes will kind of pull up to the forefront a little bit. And so, <clears throat> let's give it that time to do that. Then we'll give this bottle a little bit of time to breathe. And in a few days or a couple of weeks, whenever the time it makes sense, I will be doing the, the side-by-sides with the other whiskeys. But, give me a few minutes and we'll be back to this. All right, so the whiskey has been in the glass for right about 20 minutes. And let's see if it has had the opportunity to maybe open up a little bit for us and show us a little bit more flavor here. Okay, the nose smells a little richer now. Definitely. I'm getting a little bit more vanilla, a little bit more of like a rich, darker fruit. There's almost like a plum character in there now, which is not what I'm used to smelling on Knob Creek or Jim Beam products, but hey, I'll take it. But yeah, definitely ranched, ramped up on the richness just slightly, which is nice. I'm glad to see that. Let's get a taste. I would say the palate is pretty similar to what we said when we first tasted it. So there is a slight extra bit of richness in the middle of the palate, a little extra of that fruity quality, kind of similar to what I'm smelling on the nose. Um, so it did improve slightly, not a ton though, not enough to make a huge difference for me. Still a very solid, very drinkable. Um, I'm glad I got this bottle. You know, I really wanted to feel the no age statement and how it kind of changed the whiskey. Like I said, I think I've had pours of this before, but never had a bottle to sit here and marinate with. And it's nice to be able to sit here and taste it and see that they didn't they didn't change the whiskey too much in removing the age statement. Um, I would say it's a little bit lighter on flavor, but it's not night and day. You know, it's it's a it's a couple of points lower. So it'll be really fun to do a comparison with a nine year age dated bottle and just kind of, just to kind of see you know, how much difference did it really make. And we've been doing these segments on the channel periodically where I tell you guys, did whiskey used to be better? And this will be a fun example of that. However, they're bringing the age statement back, so not exactly relevant for this whiskey in, in particular, but still a fun, fun uh, little experiment to do. 
But anyways, I am really looking forward to doing the comparisons with the 12-year Knob Creek, the Quarter Oak, and the 9-year. I think those are going to be a ton of fun. So those will be coming up real shortly here. I just want to give this bottle a chance to breathe just a little bit and open up. So I'll probably shoot them in the next week, and they'll be coming out to you guys shortly. So if you've been able to experiment with any of this stuff, let me know what, you, what happened for you, what your experience is like in the comments down below. And really, let me know what your feelings on the no age dated non-age dated knob creek is do you think it's a vast difference from what you used to get with the nine-year age dated stuff so love to hear your opinion in the comments down below as always you can catch me on instagram and twitter at blind underscore reviews you can also catch me on instagram at mission bottle kill where i'm posting pictures of people emptying out all kinds of great bottles of whiskey if you'd like me to repost your pic just tag at mission bottle kill in your post you can also send me an email at blind whiskey reviews that's whiskey with an e at gmail.com and until next time Cheers.